Ladies and gentlemen, live, please welcome one of the greatest quartets on the road today from Gadsden, Alabama, Gold City! It's gonna be a good day, I can feel it coming on. Oh, yes, I can. All my darkest nights have come and gone. I might just break out laughing. I might just sing a song. It's gonna be a good day, I can feel it coming on. When I woke up this morning, I knew what was on the way. I could tell by how I felt inside, the sun was here to stay. Someone up in heaven must be smiling down on me. Cause I felt so excited from my head down to my feet. I'm looking for the future, and I know God is in control. I'm looking to enjoy this ride, I think I'm on the road. And possibilities Dream that I've been dreaming He has made reality I've made a resolution That I'll dwell here on the good And he'll send out a blessing Just like he said he would When I look down this tunnel I can finally see the light I've got a funny feeling Everything will be alright it's gonna be a good day, I can feel it coming on mm -hmm. All my darkest nights have come and gone I might just break out laughing, I might just sing a song It's gonna be a good day, I can feel it coming on It's gonna be a good day Come. 
And I hope y'all enjoyed that old song. That's on our latest Amazing Grace, a hymns collection album. 
that we're mighty proud of. And if you were to get something when you're coming home from a hectic day's work and you put that in your car stereo, I promise you, you'll be all settled down by the time you get home because it just has that kind of effect on you. You know, these boys that stand behind us and play, I'm just, uh, I'm so proud of them. I want to take just a minute and introduce them. And, um, you know, it's, it's a joy to see young men that dedicate their lives to, to the ministry and to be able to go out all over the country and leave their pretty little old wives at home and go out and, and play gospel music. These are some of the most dedicated young men that I've ever worked with. They're, they're, they're fine Christian young men, young men on the keyboard. He's from Dalton, Georgia, one of the finest keyboardists in gospel music today. I want you all to make him welcome tonight, Mr. Channing Ellerton. Make Channing welcome if you would. A young man that I've known since he was about knee-high to a grasshopper. He's grown up, made a, made a fine Christian young man, and uh, has done a super job for Gold City playing the bass, and he fills in anywhere else that we need him. And I, I'm just glad that I've got to know him as well as I have. Mr. Adam Borden, would you make Adam welcome? Of course, a young man that I've, I've introduced many, many times over the last 10 years, and I've known him all of his life, does a super job on the drums and does a great job in his songwriting. I'm very, very proud of him. My oldest son, Doug Riley. Would you make Doug welcome?
Thank you so much. What a thrill it is to get to sing songs about the Lord and to lift him up everywhere that we go across this great nation in which we live. We want Jay to come and sing a song for you right now. One of the greatest lyric content that I have heard in many, many years. It, it talks about the fact that uh, we as Christians need to have one single prayer in our lives. And this one single prayer should be this. Lord, don't allow me to stand in front of the cross where the world can see what I've done. But allow me to be hidden behind your cross so the world can see you through everything that you allow me to do in my life. Listen to Jay Perrick as he comes and sings this beautiful song for you. It says, Hide Me Behind the Cross. Let's sing. Lord, as I seek to serve you, may you find in me what's pleasing to your heart. I leave my will at Calvary, taking on a nature humbled by your scars for i know it's only through your love that who i am is hidden by your grace let my desires be overshadowed as i recall the purpose of that source of hope to those in need. The only profit I would gain would be the empty honor of my deeds. But with all of self behind your cross, the splendor of
bringing sorrow No hope for tomorrow I was lost in the shadows of night So I kept on striving While barely surviving I refused to walk in the light Then I dropped my defenses And came to my senses The spirit fell and flooded my soul Where sin once abounded by grace I'm surrounded Now I'm time to deliver And I'm ready to go I'm signed on that list For the day of ascension I'm sealed by the Spirit Till the day of redemption Delivered from bondage And I want you to know I'm signed to deliver And I'm ready to go I'm glad I'm signed, sealed, and delivered tonight For years I've been waiting, I'm anticipating the dawn of that glorious day. He'll break through the skies and the dead will arise, then he'll take his children away. While the spirit is calling and mercy is falling, you'd better get your name on the roll. So when the trumpet starts blowing, take comfort in knowing, here sign. If you're signed, you're sealed, and delivered, I want you to shout praise the Lord one time. Come on. Well, ain't nothing will beat it. Nothing in this world will beat that, knowing that you know that you know. I wouldn't take anything for it, folks. I can leave home every week. When I kiss my sweet wife goodbye, I know that if she don't see me again here, we'll meet again one day. And uh, that gives me more peace than all the money this world has to offer. You know, I, when I got saved in 1973 in January, a little Pentecostal boy led me to the Lord. And I had rebelled against everything that I was taught growing up. I grew up in church. I mean, I even had to go to WMU with my mother. But uh, we was there every time the doors were open. I mean, we was at church. I remember telling my mom when I was 12 years old, I said, Mom, if I ever get big, I'm never going to church again. And did I live to regret those words? I went with a group called the Dixie Echoes in 1966. I was with them just a couple over three weeks and got my draft notice. And all I was drafting for was Vietnam. I couldn't, I couldn't get in the Air Force. I, couldn't, I, 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 I didn't want to go. I'll be honest with you. When they called my name, my heart jumped from up into my throat. My mom sent an old Bible with me that she gave me to carry with me. She knew that I was lost. I never cracked that Bible the whole time I was there. And after I got saved, I, I, I don't see why God didn't just go and kill me and get me out of my misery. When I got saved in January of 1973, I went digging back into my things that I'd had when I was in the service and I found that Bible and I started uh, thumbing through it and there I found when she had marked the Romans road for me to read she had marked verses of scripture that would encourage me in times that when I didn't think I was going to make it and many many times I heard that and I guess one of the main things that really weighed on my mind was the faces of those little boys that would look up into my eyes and say, Doc, am I going to die? 
And because of my rebellion, I couldn't stoop down and whisper the plan of salvation in their ear. And those young men will spend an eternity in hell because of my rebellion. I know God's forgiven me of that. I know it's been cast into the sea of forgetfulness, but I don't have the ability to forget. And that's why I felt like I had been set free when I accepted him as my personal Savior, and everything changed. I'd seen pictures of Jesus hanging on the cross all my life. I didn't really think that much about it. It didn't affect me. The song Amazing Grace, I thought, I mean, listen, I, I'm Baptist, but I thought I was going to shout all over that place when I realized what that song meant. Now, if you're just playing church tonight, I'm going to tell you something. You really allow him to come into your heart, and everything you do will be different. Everything that you think will be different. And I'd always seen Jesus hanging there with a little blood trickling off his forehead and a little blood on his hands and on his feet. And as I studied God's word, I realized that our Savior was unrecognizable when he hung on Calvary. Oh, what a Savior. That he would be willing to do that for me. I wasn't worth shooting. But he gave his life. He took my punishment on Calvary's hill one day, just like he did for you. I want Mark to come and sing a song that explains it a whole lot better than I can. I want you to listen to this. I want you to go back to that place that your sins were forgiven, that they were washed away by the precious blood of Jesus. You listen to Calvary's hill. Once there was a place of shame And the very mention of that name Brought fear and despair to the soul People came from everywhere to see once hanging there the brown turned to crimson red as death would unfold then one day upon that lonely hill stood a cross holding love fulfilled but the mob they didn't sense a special thing though the sky had turned to gray this was Calvary's crowning day for you see its shame was taken all away for the cross held the king Calvary Calvary Oh what love was shown to me Jesus died When they see the crown that my Jesus wears and the blood flowing down his holy face. Such 
much love again I'll never see that God would give His Son for me. Love held my Jesus to that tree by those precious names. amazing, absolutely amazing what God will do with you if you just Amen. get out of his way yeah. and let him work. Never ceases to amaze me. One of the most notable scriptures in the Bible talking about the finished work at Calvary is John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. And you've seen it we that call ourselves the children of God have seen it so many times, so many different places outside the church. The world has seen John 3, 16, football games, basketball games. They'll see just a placard up there, you know, and it'll say, and it's a great witnessing tool, and, and, but I think we've seen it so much until it's just become commonplace like any other thing, like driving by a church building downtown. It's just common. But the power and the glory and the awesomeness of the fact that someone, a supreme being, would look down on planet Earth and would see me in desperate need of a Savior. The next verse is one you hardly ever hear, but it talks about me. John 3, 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, Oh, that's what I deserve. But that the world through him might be saved. Amen. God's not in the condemning business, folks. He sent his son because he wanted to get in the saving business. He knew that you and I were going to need a savior. That's why he did what he did. No other reason. We need him every day of our lives. We need him. And I just want you to do something for me right there where you are. Just close your eyes. You don't have to bow your heads. Just close your eyes. And in your heart, from your heart, sing this with me just to the Lord. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I
enjoying the presence of the Lord in this place so far? Can you just let him know it by just giving him a hand clap of praise? Let him know that you love him tonight. Yeah. Praise the Lord. and dads would get up and say tonight 
we're going to church, like it or not, and say, now you sit right there and you listen to what that preacher says, son. Because he's got something that'll last for eternity for you. Well, I'm a member of that little church now, but the preacher died a long time oh, ago. Yeah. He was a preacher on the street when God called him. I now he's a shouting up in heaven. I know what's still.
John, Mark, all the boys in the band. Let us know if you've enjoyed.